Hi, my name is Charles R. Smith Jr. and I'm the author of 28 Days, illustrated by Shane Evans for Neil Porter Books. The idea for 28 Days was actually not even my own idea. It was my editor, uh, Neil Porter, who came up with the idea. He reached out to me one day and said, would you be interested in doing a book centered around 28 Days, uh, focusing on Black History Month? And I jumped at the idea. And the first thing, though, that came to mind, though, was who was I going to put into this book? Because 28 Days, not only is it a lot of days, but I wanted to make it interesting with a wide variety of people and events. So it was real important for me to include people that I never got to see when I was in elementary school and when I was younger because I felt for years when Black History Month rolled around I always kept seeing the same names and the same faces and hearing the same thing and after a while I just tuned it out. Uh, that is until you know I got older and I started seeing more of the accomplishments and achievements that we as black people have uh, done. One of the unique things about the book, and one thing I made a point of including, was the various laws that have happened throughout the years that have uh, helped black people progress into this country. So it was real important for, to, for me to include a number of these laws to show that progression. So we have laws like the Dred Scott decision, which was a really awful decision. That's day two. A few days later, on day four, we have the 14th Amendment, which overturns the Dred Scott decision. Uh, day six, we have Plessy versus Ferguson, which states that separate but equal facilities are fair. We have day 15, Brown versus Board, which eliminates the Plessy versus Ferguson, saying separate cannot be equal. Now, even though this one isn't necessarily a law, day 22 focuses on Thurgood Marshall when he became a judge. And as being part of someone who now enforces the law and helps change new laws, that was a big step forward uh, for black people when Thurgood Marshall became a Supreme Court justice. Day 22. One of my favorite things about doing this book is that since there are basically 28 uh, days, which require 20, 28 subjects, I treated each subject as its own unique entity. I made a point of making each one very different and unique. Um, for instance, for Matthew Henson, his poem is an acrostic because there were so many things to really say about him, not so much the expedition, but so many things to say about him that I decided to take his name and turn it into really fun acrostic, spelling out his name here, starting with the first uh, letter M. Um, the word Marupalak, which is an uh, Eskimo word for the kind one. When it comes to Rosa Parks' poem, I used a more traditional form called a villanelle, which is a French style poem. It, uh, it has a very specific pattern, and I won't go into all of the details right now. It has a very specific pattern, but basically certain lines just get repeated throughout, uh, creating a nice, very steady uh, rhythmic and easy pace to it. Um, many of the other poems I use my traditional free verse the way I normally write um, but I have a few others that have acrostic uh, for Harriet Tubman and Madam C.J. Walker I used eulogies since they had such unique full interesting lives and you know I just really made a point of having a lot of fun with mixing up the type of poems that I created for the book. One of the most interesting stories in the book that I came across in doing my research was the story behind Brown versus Board. Um, as I put laws in the book, I learned that many laws started with a person, um, something that didn't work for them or something that they challenged uh, that basically added their name to it. And in the case of Brown versus Board of Education, I learned who the Brown was. It turned out it was a girl named Linda. Uh, Linda was a young girl and she wanted to go to school basically just a couple of blocks away from where she lived. However, that was an all-white school. The nearest all-black school that she could attend, she would have had to walk through a railroad switchyard uh, a good mile and a half to two miles every day and her father questioned if that was 
right. So they challenged it, but they put her name along with a number of other names into it. So when I created this piece, you can see the L, the I, the N, the D, and the A, they're spelled out in the Supreme Court's findings. And that spells out her name, Linda, or Linda Brown. Another one of the more interesting stories that I came across was that of Private Henry Johnson and Needham Roberts. This one really caught my eye because it was just a real heroic tale. And as boys, we love reading about heroic tales, so it was important for me to include it, but important for me also to go into detail in what happened. All right, one of my favorite uh, days in the book is day 27 for Oprah Winfrey. It was real important for me to include Oprah because not only is she a modern day person, but she is the first black female billionaire, which is a pretty big deal uh, to be a billionaire, whether you're white or black at any rate. Um, so for her, I decided to focus on numbers because the first thing that I had to do when I sat down to figure out how much exactly is a billion is what most people do. Sit down and count it on your fingers. Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousand, hundred thousand, million, ten million, hundred million, billion. Nine digits. That's a lot of zeros. So I wanted to show how that progression happened. So we start with number one where she was born to a single mother all the way down to a billion to show how she accumulated all of that wealth. And the great thing about it is that you get to see a hardworking individual literally move up the ladder in life. Um, so I had a lot of fun with that one and I hope uh, the readers enjoy it. So a book on Black History Month wouldn't be complete without mentioning Martin Luther King Jr. So he is featured here on day 20 talking about his I Have a Dream speech. But to me, as much, as, as much respect and love as I have for Dr. King and all that he's done, uh, growing up as a youngster, a big inspiration on me was actually day 21, Malcolm X. Now Malcolm X had a little bit of a different approach than Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. preached nonviolence. Malcolm X preached, uh, and preached achieving your goals by any means necessary. So that phrase is highlighted through an acrostic uh, mixed in with the regular words and the acrostic is highlighted with the red letters. This is also one of my favorite images that Shane did because it really puts the spotlight on his face and it really shows a really strong subject. Uh, the autobiogra autobiography of Malcolm X was very uh, influential on me when I read it in high school, uh, promoting self-reliance and the importance of education. Mm -hmm. 